Hey guys, good morning. Hope you're having a blessed day. Uh, I have been, I talked to a buddy last night, Mr. Bass, of course, and he mentioned something that I, maybe I should try. So I'm kind of recording this before I do the interview with buddy who was supposed to be on 37 minutes ago. So hopefully this comes through, or if not, you're going to see it anyway. And also to give a little bit of thanks and praise to y'all too. But uh, in talking to Mr. Bass, one of the things that I might thought about doing is to do these videos almost like a first cast early in the morning where you can be introduced to tournament anglers or lure manufacturers and not only learn about them or some of their products or whatever it is, but also to maybe learn some techniques and stuff from them that make that will make all of us better anglers because really that's what the channel is about is all of us becoming a better angler because I've been a better I've become a better angler because of this channel hopefully you have too so uh if you want to see that make sure you comment below and tell me what you think also like and subscribe and do all that other stuff uh but after this we'll have buddy on hopefully at hopefully 10 o'clock his time nine o'clock 10 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock his time. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I just wanted to also say thank you to everybody. I mean, I started this membership thing. There's been a handful of people that joined. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'm going to get those bags out for you guys uh, probably next week after after swimming over the weekend. But I, I'm going to hit a milestone probably sometime today. And it's Thursday, the 24th, and it's 938 in the morning. But sometime today, I'm going to hit uh, a million page views, and I just have to say thank you, uh, or a million views on the channel. It's it's something, this is a weird thing to do, to talk in front of a camera and think that people want to hear your opinions and hear what you want to say, because your opinion might be different than my opinion, and that's that's where I'm perfectly fine with. I don't mind if you have a different opinion than mine, but I'm going to give you my educated uh, part of it, hopefully educated, and and try to make it a little bit enter entertaining. I don't want you to have controversial clicks. I don't want you to be mad at me or to click on anything that I do because you're waiting for me to talk smack about somebody else. I just am not. I'm just not that person. Not that I don't want. To, not that I can't be that person. I'm just not that person. But I, again, I just want to say thank you for uh, supporting me. And not like I make. I mean, the amount of money I make on this is ridiculous ridiculously low but the people who are members i really really appreciate you i appreciate all the people that comment on every video and i feel like you're part of my family now and just thank you thank you so i don't know what to say it's it's a humbling thing to be honest it's a really humbling thing to be honest to think that that years ago i had this goal of doing a million views and it's finally coming here. Now it isn't coming as fast as I want it to go, but you know, that's how things work. So again, thank you guys very much. Hopefully after this, we'll have buddy. If not, you're just going to see this part and I'll reschedule buddy, but tell me what you think. If you, if you'd like me to do more of these and just by myself and just one-on-one -on -one with people and make them live or make them recorded and just in the mornings, I couldn't be happier to have, a new friend who I sound like Darth Vader to for three minutes. <laughs> uh, he's a three-time classic qualifier. Has won two events on the on the elites. Uh, just made it look really easy this weekend on my at my backyard over here at Harris Chain. He's got four wins, top, uh, ten top tens, and quite honestly, since joining the elites, you've made a lot of checks. And been like Mr. Consistent, and I'm very happy to introduce Buddy Gross. How are you, man? Good, good. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I should mention, I want to get this out right off the top. Everyone, go check out some of his sponsors. Mercury, Costa, Zoom, P-Line, Lithium Pros, Dioa, Bob's Machine Shop, Lear, Powerpole, Nichols Lures, Fitzgerald Rod. Hats off to Trevor Fitzgerald. Scottsboro Tackle Company, Fish Dayton, Owner Hooks. Boat Logic, Sonar Pros, Darren Technologies, The Tackle Trap, 27 Sports, Hank's Carpet, Decked, and Fish, Chickamauga, and Bullet Boats. That's right. Did I get all of them or majority of them? You got majority of them. Awesome. How are you? Congratulations. Good. Thank you very much. Has it sunk in? I mean, when did you get back home? 
I got by. We drove Sunday night, and I got home about three thirty on Monday, and I was at Gunnersville at five thirty on Monday. I was going to fish the Toyota, and I got down there and realized how tired I was, and uh, had a lot of interviews. So I talked to the tournament director, and told him that I think I needed to back out because I had so much going on. And he let me. I'm so thankful to him because I was really exhausted. I couldn't even put waypoints in my computer. It was that bad, or in my in my GPS. So. So tell uh, me how you got introduced into the outdoors. Did dad take you fishing when you were young? How did you get started? Yeah, my dad was awesome. He, you know, we didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid and we had a flat bottom boat on top of a CJ five and he took me to every pond and lake we could get to. I fished Chickamauga with a trolling motor for three years before I ever had a, uh, you know, a gas powered boat when I was a kid. So it's, uh, it's been something I've really enjoyed and uh, been very blessed to be able to do. Did you, so you fished the FLW for a little bit, and then did you did you have to qualify to get into the leaps, or did you was that the that switching weird? No, I, I missed the switcheroo. I I was so far down in the points at FLW, I missed the switch, so I had to actually qualify through the opens. How tough is it to do that? Because I believe the the opens are the toughest group of anglers ever. Not they to are that, too many. Yeah, there's a bunch of them, but it's also tough. And you, you don't have a whole lot of tournaments to make, you know, you can't mess up. You can't have a bad day. You can't have an off day. You have to hit it every time. And and it was just a really good schedule for me whenever I did make it. And Harris Chain was part of that. Yeah. Uh, we wound up going to Chickamauga, which was a bonus. So it, it was a good schedule. But I jumped in the opens, honest to goodness, just to try to make some extra money and looked up one day and I was leading the points. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is something that's, that's a doable deal. So, you know, I just, uh, what was weird is when I really realized I had a chance to make the leaps and I started wanting to try to make the leaps, <laughs> my performance went down. So I wish I hadn't paid so much attention to it, but I did. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to be here. The leaps has been uh, – Bassmaster is, is the real deal. It's a, it's a genuine home-friendly atmosphere, and they keep us informed, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, it's – it's. I mean, what Bass has done is in, is unbelievable, especially after the whole – mess up thing and how they've come back to you know promoting like yourself i mean you it's it's unbelievable to think of all the the new people that we're able to see and just how good the anglers are still i mean yeah it's it's yeah, awesome. there's no lack of competition over to the late right now i promise you that yeah <laughs> well i mean the opens are hard the elites are e even tougher uh, when you look at, are you are you getting ready for the classic now? Yeah, I've got a whole pit crew out here in the garage trying to help me because I was really far behind. I'm tightening bolts, working on the steering. I'm mean, doing everything it takes just to be sure we're, you know, our boat's ready, our our equipment's ready, and and just be ready to go fishing because we don't need a whole lot of distractions at this one. Yeah, have you put in some time on the water, or are you going on stuff that you know already? No, I went over and looked at it before it went off limits, and all I did is look. I, when I go to look at the lakes, I don't do a whole lot of fishing because it's going to change when we get there. I'm just looking for that little needle in the haystack, kind of like I found a Harris chain. I'm always trying to find something that somebody might have missed, and 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 I like fishing in out of a crowd. I don't like the crowds, and it you know on live it probably looked like I was in a crowd, but I was really fishing my own deal and didn't have to worry about it a whole lot down there. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to go back to the classic, but let's talk about the Harris chain. Uh, obviously, you love. You must. You're one of the few anglers that loves that must love Florida right now. I, every time I talk to an angler, they they hate it. But you, you're Mister. You do really well down here. And why is that? I don't know. I mean, it scares me to death. I, my, I mean, I tell my wife before we made that trip down. I was like, man, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about. It. She said, well, you please be quiet. You're always worried about that. I'm like, legit. I was worried. I, I don't know why. But, but again, I was. I can tell you why. Because I had a really bad practice. And I thought I was going to fish for 10 pounds a day and hope like crazy I caught a big one to get up to 15 and just salvage another tournament. But it didn't work out that way. We wound up catching them pretty good. And, and it came out of nowhere. It was something I wasn't expecting. And, and I think that's one of the greatest gifts we get. So was it – it looked like when I was watching live, you were throwing some sort of lipless crankbait, rattle trap or something. Was that your yeah. – was that the key did, that you found and you were just that, ripping it through our grass? I was actually didn't fish a lot of grass. I was fishing oh. a lot of hard spots. So I stayed off the grass because the grass had, there was a lot less grass. I had 400 waypoints from the last time I was there that I deleted that the grass was gone. So there was good grass and fish in it, but there was not a lot of grass and all the fishermen were keying in on it. So 
I was looking at it. I marked it all. I knew it was there. I knew what to fish, but I was looking for something a little bit different and run across a hard shell pattern, shell bed pattern. And, and that's what we kind of exploited all week. How did the Harris chain fish so much differently than St. John's for you the week before? You know, there were some similarities. I still fished hard spots when I was at St. John's. I just didn't catch as many fish, but when I caught fish at St. John's, they were pretty good size. Uh, I did more, more bed fishing at, st john's i have one little place up there that's always got them on it and it carries me for one at least one day or a day and a half every time we're there but uh you know i've, I've had two really tough practices and turned it into enough to get checks at both places now why didn't you go when, when you start hearing all those guys making that run to a popka does it ever go into your head i need to make that run it does but but i have been to harris chain three times i think now and until the open, which was what three years ago, I'd always locked through and either went to Griffin or Popka or somewhere. I'd always got in that lock deal. But every time I came back, when I hit Harris, Little Harris, or even Eustace, I would cull almost everything in my bag. And I just decided there's no sense to do that anymore when the fish are that good on those lakes. Yeah, the Harris chain really does. It's it's a really good place. Live, since I live in a Popka, when I heard that people were locking through and going to a Popka, I was like this is either it's it's hit or miss and yeah. uh it was that was that was literally the biggest surprise for me last weekend was to hear how well people were doing in a pop guy or getting at least one yeah. big one yeah you know when glenn used to go up there and explore it all the time it, it kind of got popular now everybody knows it but what happened back in those days there's fewer people went yeah and if there was 15 people went 10 of them was in the canal and five of them was in the lake and it made it okay but I think I heard there was 25 people at the lot yeah. on that one. And you get that many people on a pop gun, they're all fishing the same thing. It it, it kind of cuts the – there's a lot of things that helped me to get this win, and that's part of it. I mean, there's a lot of people sharing water. Uh, You know, in Banana Cove, there's probably 40 boats actually yeah. fishing that grass, and they're all having to split those fish up. If you had five guys sharing those fish instead of 40, I don't think I could have beat them. But, you know, luckily – it just kind of played in our hand, and uh, we did a good job of, you know, exploiting what we had. So let's get back to the classic. The classics next week. How on a one to ten, how excited are you to get up there? Uh, eleven on excitement. Uh, nervousness is a forty-four, <laughs> and uh, you know, I just, I just want to go up there, and you know, we just to make the classic has been a blessing. Last year I made the classic, and and I had a messed up ankle. I, I'd really made a bad mistake on a horse the day before we left to go to the classic. So I fished it injured and I think I finished 50 second. I just need to get a good solid finish in the classic. And uh, I don't know, just kind of solidify me being there, you know, is it, is the, when you make your first classic and you know, you're so excited about being there and the media, does that, does, does that play into your overall fishing mentality? You know, I, sh I wished I went fishing as a younger man. I didn't start this till what, six or seven, seven years ago. I, my nerves would not let me do this fishing gig 20 years ago. I was good enough to go probably, but I couldn't handle it. That, that kind of pressure just tore me up. I go to the bathroom 14 times on the boat ramp or stop and puke twice. You know, that was, that was me. I mean, somehow, some way I have a pace about it now and I don't really get tore up. I mean, every now and then if I have a, Stomach does not feel real good. Usually it's a good day, but uh, it's not the bad days it does that. So I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty calm about it. I just want to go have a good time and uh, represent everybody that's following us and make sure I do them a good job. Is it going to be Is it going to be crushing weights, do you think? I mean, it's it's going to be pre-spawn, obviously. But, I mean, here here's a, here's a question. Do you go back and watch, like, Jordan Lee's Bassmaster stuff and, and check that out? I look at some of that stuff just to see what kind of baits and stuff they're doing. But, uh, man, I don't watch a lot of it. I, I should. I really should. I'm not a – I wish I watched more of it. But I'm just going to kind of do my deal. I, I seem to do better not front chasing rabbits down the rabbit holes. But uh, I just go fish my deal. And, and usually somehow, some way, we figure something out just to get us safe face anyway. What do you tell all these young, these young men these days that are coming up in the – the high schools and the college ranks and want to be a professional angler. When they say to you, buddy, I want to do what you do. What, what do you tell them? What, what should they be doing to maybe get to that next level? 
my first thing is, and I hope you don't know, I hope you appreciate this, but I tell them to get an education so they got something else to fall back on because this is a tough career. It is, uh, I'm away from my family and I love my family. I'm away from my family 25, 30 weeks a year. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm having a good week, they always fly out or drive out, you know, and show up. But make sure you got something to fall back on. I'm an old guy and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do when I wash out of this day, this deal. So it's, uh, Get your education and then work hard. Don't never think it's going to come easy because it won't. The, hard, the easier you think it's going to be, the twice as hard it's going to be. So, you know, I was telling a little story last night where when we were fishing local, I had done a lot of team fishing, and, and, and we were right on the edge of being good, but we were getting beat by some older gentlemen. And, and we were uh, – one of them was Randall Thart and Marshall Dickens. I'll tell you the two that really – those two guys drove me to be a better fisherman because – We'd go to Gunners, we'd go fish a tournament, and we'd fish all day, and it's 40 degrees and, you know, rained all day, and we're freezing to death, and, and we finish fifth or sixth, and they finish second, and, and I see them put their boat back in, and they go fishing while we're going home. I told my buddy, we were crossing the bridge, I said, right there's why we're getting baited. what do you mean? I said, look where they're going, look where we're going. So it kind of changed my whole attitude about fishing back in those days. I was early there, get there early and stay late, and put the time in and, and try to make my presentations the best I can make them. So you got to work hard if you want it. And it, it is a dream that is attainable, but you got to work hard because there's a lot of people wanting the same dream. It's, it, it is a tough living, isn't it? And very tough. Very tough. I mean, it looks easy and everybody thinks we got all these millions of dollars. I'm still the guy who was broke when I started and I'm making a pretty good way now, but it's not a, uh, it's not easy. I mean, it's, it, it is a full-time job. And it is a very time consuming job. I'm full time truck driver, part time accountant, full part time fisherman. It, it, you got to do it all. It's a business. And yeah. You have to kind of take it that way. There's not a lot of play time. It's, it's all business. We fish daylight to dark every day, cram in something to eat. That's why I'm so big. I eat terrible on the road. And, and we go to bed and wake up and do it again. You know, you get five hours of sleep, you've done something in this business. So uh, I'm tired off. <laughs> My body's getting wore out, but. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. The Lord's blessing us, and uh, we're getting to be on a platform. We get to share His word, and it, it's it's just a good thing for us. Is having the Lord uh, that influence that having religion in your your life? How do you look? Do you use that while you're out there fishing and just say a prayer? How does religion go into your your fishing style or your fishing life or life in general? It's just something we have no control over. I have to live a lot by faith because if I worried about everything I need to be worrying about or should, you know, I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm not saying should worry about, it, but there's a lot of things to worry about, but I can't worry about it. I mean, I can't worry about where the next check's coming from or nothing like that. I just got to hope that I do my job and, and use the skills that he's given us and then and, and in return he provides, you know? Yeah. 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 The, the having faith in this religion, I mean, Jimmy Houston's the, the key of it. He constantly talks about his faith and it's one and it's wonderful to hear in my opinion. Uh, it's wonderful. So I, most of the time, and this is going to be, this is honestly the first time I'm ever going to ask this question. Done the radio show for 12 years. I always ask people, what's your biggest fish story? Today I'd like to hear like the bad beat for like poker. What is the the biggest fish story that you missed and why? And uh, where? I got it. I, it's going to be pretty easy for me. So... The year that we I qualified for the Bassmaster Lakes, there was a Bassmasters Open at Chickamauga Lake, which is my home lake. Mm -hmm. The last day of that tournament, well, then you got to understand something. I fished a particular spot, and there's some people who are going to watch this show that probably knows the spot, but I'd fished that particular spot for a FLW tour event. I'd fished that spot for a FLW coast event then, and then I went to the Bass Open within about a month. I fished every one of these places. And I started on the same place for four, for three week, for three tournaments. The best it ever was was the last day of the last tournament. And I had 22 pounds in the boat, and I consistently lost a seven and a six back to back and had them both in the boat, and they went out. Well, I, I, I would take it back. One of them was in the boat, went out. The other one just dumped me at the boat. That would have put me in the Bassmaster Classics, and I won the points, and I won the tournament, and I lost every bit of it right there, and I finished third. Oh. And that was probably my worst beat. And I had some sponsors that actually followed me out were sitting there. And uh, that's the closest I ever come to just absolutely having a meltdown. I mean, I had to sit down and stop and think about it for a minute. But that's my bad beat because I would have made my first classic through an open, and I would like to have done that. That would have been pretty cool. 
when you lose lose a couple fish like that, do you change the way you're fishing and slow down, or does do the adrenaline make you speed up a little bit? How do you how do you overcome something like that? I had to do a lot of praying and just just kind of regroup, just sit down. I'm telling you, it's the closest I ever come to losing. I've never really lost it over nothing. I'm pretty calm and cool about losing or whatever happens. I can pretty much handle. But that deal right there got me, and uh, I just had to sit down and regroup and uh, fish hard the rest of the day. And it did not happen. Uh, I finished third, but I had them right there. I mean, like rubbing on it. I'm like rubbing, and I could I could see it, smell it, touch it, taste it, and it just went right out the door. Yeah. Okay, a couple more, and I'll let you go. You know, we're you're looking at an average angler. No, I I pretend I can fish well. It's it's a whole thing. I'm just playing off on YouTube. Uh, when you talk to like us normal anglers, us average anglers, is there something that we should be doing to become better at? I'm not saying going pro, but becoming better anglers. Is there something you see in in normal people that we should do better? Uh, I think most, and this is I'm talking about like a local angler now. Yeah because I was bad about it and I'm going to be bad about it when we come back to Chimago, but you can't fish history. You got to go out, let the conditions dictate what goes on and where you need to be. And, and all of us are guilty of it. Every time we go to a lake, we've been there three times. The first thing we check is what we did the last time over there. But uh, I'm telling you, I learned a lot in Florida this time. You got to let the fish tell you what's going on and, and just go with your gut and don't let history dictate where you fish. Yeah. Chicken mod was wonderful, by the way it can be tough <laughs> but it is it is a big fish factory uh you know that northern strain and florida strain kind of got together and i'm telling you that that thing grows giants has a lot of fish uh and it has a lot of versatility but it is a great great place to go catch you one big fish yeah it, you'll get you can get one big fish yes pretty, uh, I, pretty fished common. In, I fished in it a couple years ago it was tough it was a horrible day but you know, it was still, I was out with my little boy. He was nine. He was eight or nine years old. And, and that just made the whole thing even better. So uh, yeah. it was wonderful. Uh, okay. Biggest fish. Did I ask that? What's your biggest fish you ever caught? It, it was a little over 13 on Chickamauga. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. I, I, I actually thought you, uh, someone would pull up a, a, a 10, 12 pounder off Harris this last weekend. I really did. I think John had – no, where did he have one that close to 11? Yeah, there was one that was 10, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was, that was a, that's a good one too, though. Yeah. Well, those, but I mean, go go ahead. I, I'm just going to say, I mean, like I can't I, – I know I've got like 15 over 10 off Chickamauga. I mean, that's that many grows. I mean, there's a lot of big fish up there. Yeah, that's – the that whole fishery up there is as good as it gets, really. They manage it well. Uh, I think the problem with the down here is we spray too much. I think I still think we yep. spray too much, but I mean yep. the Harris chain has done really well too. It, it is, but but it's because they let it grow sometimes. I mean, that, I don't think the spraying bothers them as bad as if they'll keep letting it grow in places and, and kill it in some places and then let it catch back up in another place. But they kind of eradicated it on the big lake, and I didn't. Uh, I think it'll hurt the fishing if they don't let it grow again pretty soon, but. When I was there in November, like there was some short stuff starting to grow back, and I went out there and started looking for it, and it was actually gone. So it got worse instead of better. When, yeah, that's when November that's when I got there. Well, I really appreciate the time. I want everyone to go check you out on Facebook. Uh, it's facebook.com, Buddy Gross Fishing. Make sure you – I'm going to be talking about you in my in my classic uh, predictions, and I'm not I'm not trying to give you any anything away, but – He's one maybe you should you should think about, and uh, I wish you the best of luck at the Classic. I wish you the best of luck of the season, and I'd love to do this again another time, and thank you for your time again. Anytime, and I'm sorry we had difficulties getting started this morning. but uh, No problem. Thank you, for, thank you for having me on the show, and I'd love to come back. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many horses are in the back? I need to know. I saw it. Was it wasn't your wife? Yes, yeah, she's back there feeding. We have three. My daughter's a barrel racer. Oh, she is? She's Does only 12. Well, she just turned 13. She's been racing for about a year, but she, I think she's got more talent in her pinky racing horses than I do anywhere on me fishing, so I'm probably in trouble. One of my things is I say after, in every video, take a kid fishing. Do you, did you introduce her to the outdoors? Does she enjoy fishing, or is it just horse riding? She's a natural fisherman, but is she? I can only get her to fish. She'd rather swim when we go, 
but uh, she's natural. She's throwing a bite caster at five years old. Uh, Come on! Spinning. Come I'm not on. kidding. I'm not. I could take her to the lake with a, with a spinner. I, I give her a bite caster, put braid on it, tie the later on it. She could throw a trick worm. And anybody that's ever throwed that knows how hard that is. I mean, she can catch them, but she uh, she don't care nothing about it. And all of her little friends now, a lot of the, a lot of the boys in the neighborhood will come talk to me about fishing. She gets mad because they don't come visit her. <laughs> so, I have, I have a little boy who's a swimmer, uh, a state champion swimmer. And awesome. uh, and one of the things I did this year was I uh, I started giving the older kids who Thomas, my little boy, looked up to a rod and a reel because they were like constantly harassing me about fishing. And uh, now now it, there's a little bit of competitiveness. You know, these kids are 13, 14 and Thomas is 11. Thomas will say to you, say to him. I'll come over and fish with you, but I'm going to outfish you. <laughs> You're going to get your, it's going to, the smackdown's going to happen. Oh, that's awesome. So it's just wonderful. I'm glad you, t you, your daughter's fishing. And that's, that's just another, that just shows how good of a person you are, man. So, well, thank you. Uh, well, God bless, of course. Yes, and uh, thank you again. And we'll talk again soon, brother. Forgot to do a wrap up. I, and I also changed the microphone. We had some technical difficulties, but I mean, that is what it is. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Buddy for coming on briefly and talking fishing and everything else. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you go to his, his Facebook page and like it and support the man because it was really cool that he took time to do this, especially because the classic here is like in a few days. He should be probably running off and uh, getting ready for the classic. So I really, really do appreciate it. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that like, comment, uh, like and comment below and tell me what you think. Also hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. It really does. I really do appreciate it and really does help the channel. Like always, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. Thank you, buddy. We'll see y'all soon. Cheers.